The federal government's anti-graft agency, the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, and the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation have begun investigation and audit of state governments, agencies, and personnel who spent the COVID-19 funds from the government and private individuals. The Office of the Attorney General of the Federation said the internal audit procedures would apply to all transactions relating to the COVID-19 funds and reports would be forwarded to its audit monitoring department. The AGF Ahmed Idris added that any ministry uh, or department or agency that contravened the guideline would be sanctioned and the names of such MDAs and its principal officers would be made public as a measure of transparency. Joining us to discuss this is Ihechuku Ibeji, communications expert and analyst. Good morning, Mr. Ibeji. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us also. Now, do you think yeah. states and the federal government have been transparent in their use of the COVID-19 funds so far? Well, um, my personal views are part. That is one of the reasons why these um, this, um, investigations are very necessary. Uh, because even during the COVID uh, uh, distribution of the palliatives, there were some public complaints online um, about how the fact that some of these palliatives did not get to some members of the public. And if you look at the report on this current uh, ongoing investigation, that is one of the terms that are in there. So it's, it's more or less like a two-prong investigation, one from the Accountant General of the Federation's office, because we're talking about public funds here. We're talking about uh, uh, companies and the uh, corporate bodies who have who have donated public funds to the federal and state coffers. So there's need for accountability to audit the account. Uh, there's a public account from the CAC COVID general account that, that's totaling over 25 billion. And this, this amounts of money are monies that are from public, uh, from uh, private coffers to public um, coffers um, for, 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 the, for the palliatives. Of course, there's also another aspect that has to do with the ICPC uh, investigating certain alleged a diversion of funds in respect to logistics funds associated with the with the with the palliatives and the COVID funds. So these are things that um, that um, both the ICPC and the, uh, the uh, office of the um, Accountant General are seeking to to find out. Um, but from my own point of view, I think that um, it is necessary to find out exactly if these funds. Um, were, were used for the palliatives if it got to the people, which is the major reason for it. It, it must be ascertained whether it actually reached the people. And there were a lot of complaints uh, towards, towards this uh, palliative the lockdown period about um, the way these palliatives were shared. Thank you. I mean, a lot of people, are, there's been a lot of focus, especially because the, num the funds that we are talking about are quite huge. Now, uh, how can we make them more accountable, you know, in the, their dealings, how this money is spent, where it's gone to? How can we make them accountable and assured, uh, you know, and be assured that indeed, yes, the monies are going to the right places as intended? Okay, so now... Um, there are there are certain audit processes that would naturally flow with um, with a use of such funds. Uh, one of the greatest ways for accountability is to ensure that they get to the people that um, they are they are intended to get to. Uh, you cannot just sometimes you cannot just leave these things in the hands of government um, for them to ensure that they, they go ahead to just. Boot. Now, what that does is that it creates different layers of checks and balances. So while you have the auditors who should naturally flow with um, how the monies are dispersed, how the items are bought, you would also have structured committees that are working with um, the, the, the global body to ensure that these items actually get to the people at the very, very lowest rung of, of, of the population. And so this most times what it does for them is that it does a lot of checks and balances from each side so that at the end of the day when you have auditors who are ensuring that the monies are released uh, from the federal coffers you are having the people who are ensuring that these foods um these palliatives get to the people at the wrongs at the very lowest rungs of the population you are also ensuring that you have the local government people that they are working with and um, I, I think I watched the video on the COVID, um IG page where they spoke about how they had structured and um, how they had made uh, structures of distribution of this, um, 
this uh, palliatives, and it followed, you know, it, it followed a general flow that it moves from one particular from one particular audit process to another um, process. So meaning that not just one person is handling this. Um, so I mean, if you leave it in one in the hands of one person, um, of course, a, a lot is left to our imagination. That is one of the very um, good ways of ensuring that these things get to the people that it is it is intended to. And that, that brings me to my quest, last question to you, which is, it's not only with this case of uh, COVID-19 that we've had concerns around transparency and management of funds. Is it a question of a long-term mistrust that has already been ingrained in our system, you know, that makes people very anxious? When you talk about funds, uh, everybody's ears, you know, are open and wondering, where is it going to now? How do we come to a point where, you know, we trust our government, we trust our system to say that, yes, is this, this money is being given and we are sure without any shadow of doubt that it will go into the essence of it. What we're, what we're, what we're looking at here, what we're looking at here is a long, long, long term tradition. Um, it, stems from, it stems from an endemic um, uh, or rather a systemic thing that has to do with um, uh, the government making promises and not being able to keep it. Um, so there are a lot of promises that have been made, not just by this government, but a lot of promises that have been made by, by preceding governments. Um, and you make promises to, to the people, electoral promises, you make promises to the people um, based on your budget, you make promises to the people based on your policies, and then you're not able to keep it. What it does that is over time, it engenders a lot of mistrust. And that's exactly what we're seeing going on now. The same thing with funds. And then aside that also, there's a lot of play that has to go into um, um, certain news and reports that come out from there, both the ones that are unsubstantiated and the ones that people call fake news. So now, so when the government is presenting one front, one front, these reports are coming out on another front. And then um, 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 the government reports, these reports, and the fact that these promises that had been made were not kept over time, of course, it's definitely going to engender a lot of distrust among the people. And that's exactly one of the things, one of the things that we're seeing. Promises not kept, um, news and reports that have come out from there, whether it's substantiated or not, and then claims by the government that these things have been done. It's going to take a lot, a lot to get the trust of the people, the, mission, the understanding of the people to begin to align to what it is that um, the government have said they are, they, are going to, they are going to do, because the government have the total authority of the people. But because this level of trust and understanding, uh, this level of trust has over time been broken, uh, it would take government a great effort. And one of some of those efforts aside accountability is to ensure that the things they have said that they want to do, the things they have said that they have promised to the people that they want to do, they do them. They do them exactly the way it is. And um, that is um, exactly one of the things that uh, uh, um, we we're seeing. Uh, it, look, this accountability process going on with the palliatives, I expect to see even more than this. I expect to see, and this is my personal opinion, I expect to see at some point even the EFCC snooping around because um, we are talking about huge, huge um, uh, application of funds here. And every process in such, in, 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 with such a magnitude of funds, um, with such a magnitude of involvement of people, with such a magnitude that's so delicate to, to, to public interest, is definitely going to attract such investigation. I expect to see more over the next coming, uh, coming weeks about um, uh, this, this, this uh, situation. Thank you so very much, Mr. Ibeji, for your contributions on News on the Hour this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for having me.